One of the important concepts that we have to think about and which many women are in fact thinking about is how can a woman do something about her health without necessarily having to go to a doctor. And so this is self-empowerment of women. Well, let's look at a healthy woman. Uh, some of the options, obviously, uh, hygiene, and to some extent hygiene is important, but please don't think that that's the key to health because if someone gets a bladder infection, then the implication is that they're not hygienic. And as I said earlier, that's not the situation at all. Douching is... Uh, uh, Many people seem to do this, and this, it's hard to get the real data on it. I would say that uh, in, in many cases, over-douching is not a good thing to do because if you can imagine, you have normal bacteria living in the vagina, and if you keep rinsing them out, then the potential is there for them to be replaced by organisms that no longer are beneficial. Okay, if you have a history of urinary tract infection, the doctor will give you a number of options. Uh, there will be, for example, if you've had three or four bladder infections in the last year, you would then be recognized as someone that's at risk, and you may be given an antibiotic once a day for a year to try and stop the cycle of events. Clearly, that can have side effects, because antibiotics do. Another option is that if it's always related to sexual intercourse, that you would be given an antibiotic, which you take immediately after intercourse. I always laugh at that because then if you have intercourse five times in the one night, if you're lucky enough, then you certainly wouldn't take five antibiotics. You'd only take the one, of course, but that's, that's essentially an antibiotic approach. Now, what about the other options? Well, there's two others where you take a 12-hourly wash of methanamine hippurate or povidone iodine. Well, that's very cumbersome. Uh, I would think that many women would not want to do that. What about history of yeast vaginitis? Well, people have talked about diet and cutting down on sugars and things like that. And again, there's not a lot of hard data that, that says that that's necessarily going to prevent yeast vaginitis. And remember, 60% of women have yeast in the vagina. It's not necessarily a harmful organism. And this concept of trying to wipe out yeast from your body, first of all, it's impossible. You could never do it. And secondly, we really don't know what yeast does in a beneficial way. So as long as there's only a few of them, it's really not a problem. It's when they take over that it becomes a problem. And so therefore, intestinal cleansing, vaginal cleansing, really I'm not uh, a proponent of because I think the data is, is weak. If you have a history of bacterial vaginosis, there really is no known therapy. So there's no, uh, no way that you can prevent that. I mean, you start to talk about cranberry juice, which people use to prevent urinary tract infection. The way cranberry juice works is it has a byproduct that stops bacteria sticking to the bladder, but there's really no data on it for vaginitis, so I don't think it would necessarily work. And it's the kind of thing that cranberry juice is probably good for you anyway, and it will perhaps stop some infections, but not necessarily too many. If you're pregnant, at risk of preterm labor, again, there's no preventive therapy. Uh, physicians should be looking to see if you have bacterial vaginosis or just prior to delivery whether you have uh, group B streptococcus because that can be a problem for the baby. But again, if you have bacterial vaginosis, um, the question then for the physician is do they treat you or don't they? Don't they? And uh, some of the clinical data indicates that even if you do treat with antibiotics, it doesn't necessarily mean you prevent preterm labor. So again, it's not ideal. Uh, we don't really have an alternative. And then lastly, if you're postmenopausal with a history of infections, the only thing that's really been shown to reduce the, the number of infections is estrogen replacement therapy. And of course, many women are not keen to do that. In each of the situations I've described, the use of lactobacilli rhamnosis uh, GR1 and lactobacillus reuteri RC14 have been shown to have a benefit in the healthy woman, in reducing urinary tract infections, in reducing yeast vaginitis and bacterial vaginosis, and uh, they've been shown to be safe in pregnancy, although we don't yet have the data showing that it prevents preterm labor, so we can't say that. And in estrogen, sorry, in postmenopausal women, we've shown that it can also help. So there is certainly a potential alternative. It's by no means a cure-all. It's not going to prevent all infections because there really is nothing that does that, not even antibiotics. But it's a good start. It's a natural therapy and the woman is empowering herself to do it, to take this uh, uh, probiotic.